My first trip to Cuba began in May of 1960, when I was a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin. And uh, from reading about what was going on in Cuba, I had an overwhelming curiosity to see what was actually happening in Cuba. Because I said to myself, how long can the Cubans get away with this before the United States invades Cuba? Um, so, I mean, later on there was an interpretation that the United States was afraid of the Cuban model of socialism. Well, that's not what I observed. My observation was that the, Cuban, that the United States government was deeply annoyed at Cuban disobedience, which was another model that Cuba set up for the rest of Latin America. And I might add that, you know, if you look today at Latin America and you compare it to Latin America 1959, you can see a significant change. You can say that Hugo Chavez has led a move to take Latin America away from the United States, and he has done it successfully. If you count the Chavistas or Fidelistas who are now running governments in Latin America, you start with uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Venezuela, Bolivia, Ecuador, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, maybe Peru. Anyway, and several of the Caribbean countries. Look at the Republica Dominicana and some of the English-speaking islands, which are today quite uh, a bit more independent than they were back 50-plus years ago. Now, these are fidelistas, these heads of state, although they were all elected and didn't take power through revolution as the Cuban leadership did. So if you look back, Fidel Castro has been very successful in, if you like, carrying out what Chavez calls the Bolivarian ideal, right? Independence for Latin America. But back in May of 1960, I remember taking, there was a flight every hour from Miami to Havana, either on Pan Am or on Cubana. And I came down in a mostly empty flight no tourists. I didn't meet one tourist. Um, tourism had literally shut down. And the large owners, that is the really wealthy people, had already gone to Florida. And now by the spring of 1960, the middle class was starting to flee Cuba as well, thinking that their property would be seized, and they were correct, uh, that they there were no more business for their stores, especially if the stores depended on tourism, as many businesses did in Havana. So you had a daily flight of people leaving Cuba, um, and the Cuban government was moving on a daily basis to the left. But the initial response of the U.S. government to the Cuban Revolution was, hey, be obedient. And the initial antithesis or antipathy toward the Cuban Revolution began before the revolutionaries took power. In the United States or officials of the U.S. Embassy in Havana had participated in organizing a coup d'etat after they had determined that Batista had no longer any possibility of retaining power. This was in the fall of 1958 and they tried to organize a coup of colonels in the armed forces to take power so as to prevent the revolutionaries from seizing power. However, luckily the colonels argued amongst themselves and it didn't happen. So as soon as the revolutionaries took power and declared that Cuba is now finally independent and free, Washington said, hey guys, just be obedient and everything will be okay. And the Cuban government said, we're independent, not obedient. And to my mind, this is the cardinal sin that the Cuban Revolution and the Cuban government committed against the United States, the sin of disobedience. Up until now, the United States controlled the vote in the OAS, controlled Latin America's vote in the United Nations, and by and large controlled the behavior of Latin American companies, especially vis-a-vis -vis private property and U.S. property. Those people who had been disobedient were punished. The most recent example had been Jacobo Arbenz in Guatemala, 
who seized uh, property belonging to United Fruit Company, which refused to pay its fair share of the taxes. Arbenz was punished by having the CIA organize uh, an insurrection to uh, essentially take over the country. It was a coup, and it was organized in Washington. And this was a punishment for the sin of disobedience. And other governments before this had fallen as well. Usually it was easy to just knock off the head of state in one way or another. It's happened in Nicaragua on several occasions and in various countries throughout Latin America.